I am so excited to start filming this video. I'm here in northeastern Arkansas, and this video is the start of the end of a journey that's taken 22 months. For 22 months, I've lived in my little Volkswagen Golf right back there behind the tree, uh, traveling around the country, trying to find the best places in the United States. Now, I found a lot of them. I have a list that I'll share with you at some point at the link in the description, but Today, starting this video, we're finishing the last two states, checking out the last two states of the 50 state tour. Uh, Kentucky is next, which is just about two hours away, and then we have Delaware next. And I'm gonna go visit both those states in this video and finish all 50 states in the United States. Like, I'm 25 years old, and the idea that I've finished all 50 states, it's gonna be this year, uh, is kinda wild to me, and I can't wait to film the YouTube video on it. So we're just gonna get started. Road trip montage commence right now. Kentucky. It's raining like crazy down here in the east right now. I saw I had to take my shirt off to film this video. I don't know why that's a requirement, but I felt like it was part of the, it was part of the video. It had to be. So this is Kentucky. That means I only have one state left before I'm finished with the 50 state tour. That state is Delaware, which is several, maybe a thousand miles away. I don't know. It's a very long ways away. And we're gonna see how long it takes to get there. But for the next couple days, I'm here in the unbridled spirit state. I had no idea that's what it was. So let's see what it's all about. So I just crossed the border into Kentucky and I usually don't do this. I usually just buy one meal out per day, spend about 30 to $35 a day. But today, because I just crossed my 49th state, I wanted to go try some Kentucky barbecue. Now this is kind of cool because the lady inside is humbly admitting to maybe being the best barbecue in like the four states around here. So we'll see. No. Can I film it? Can I film yeah. you? Yeah? yeah. Oh my. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> so I will say the venue is not ideal. It's very loud, but <laughs> we have food. We have food, so this is the first try of Kentucky barbecue. We're gonna taste how good this actually is. This is the pork, the pork plate, pulled pork. So there's different kinds of barbecue, right? So there's like a sweeter, more like tangy barbecue. There's like a vinegary, almost a, uh, Almost like it hits your tongue different. It hits your tongue, it's a sharper barbecue. This is a vinegar sauce and it changes depending on what southern state you're in. So we're gonna try this sauce over the pork. That's damn good barbecue. Oh, that's a really good barbecue. Guys, first restaurant. Right, so I don't know if it's the best restaurant in Kentucky, no. but that is very, very good. Coleslaw is good too. Mm. Yeah, no, I'm happy. I'm happy. That's a good meal. I'll see you probably later tomorrow when we get a good place to sleep and stuff tonight. But I'll turn on the camera and say hi if anything. I'm gonna finish my meal. 49 states, man. Only 756 miles to Delaware, so we're almost there. I can't even begin to tell you how amazing it feels to find a place outside of the city that I can sleep. No one bothers me throughout the night. It's just so wonderful. I'm still here in Kentucky, just the next morning since I crossed the border and it feels so glorious. So glorious to be here in a good place to get a full nine hours of sleep at night. The birds wake up, they're singing. The rain on the roof gives you the music to fall asleep. Oh, I needed it so bad. The city was so hard to sleep. 
and I'm finally sleeping. So I'm going in to do a little bit of work today at Piper's Tea and Coffee House here in Pladaka, uh, Kentucky, some weird town name like that. And normally I wouldn't show you this part of my day, but I've gotten more feedback that people are just interested in how I live on the road. Uh, so I have two laptops. What I'm going to do today, this is my editing laptop. It's my old laptop where the keyboard doesn't work as well anymore. So I have a new typing laptop right here. This is where I do all my work. This is like my money-making laptop where I work with my clients, take Zoom calls, all that sort of stuff. And then I have this laptop, which is my editing laptop that has more processing power. I don't know anything about laptops, so I don't really know what else to say other than that. It has more processing power, so it uploads videos faster, uh, but it just doesn't work as well on the typing or the camera side of things. So it's kind of a funny thing, but I got two laptops for that, but it's what works. So I'm going in to edit the last bit of my Texas YouTube video that will be posted before this one. You might be coming from that video to watch this one right now. And we're gonna go to a little coffee shop and get it done. And this is what most of my mornings look like. I laptop, work, and then drive a little bit to find a great place to hang out, run through the woods, have a good time. So here we go. I'm the luckiest person I know. So right now I am at the National Corvette Museum that you can see right over here. There's just a Corvette that drove by me. Like Corvette here, Corvette here, Corvette here, Corvette here. Uh, there is some sort of convention going on. I've all, I was gonna come to the Corvette Museum either way, but right now there's a convention going on where everybody that owns a Corvette from like anywhere in the country is invited to come right here, right now. Look, there's another one pulling in right in front of me right now. This is just the coolest. I'm the luckiest guy ever. So we get to go inside and check all this out right in prime time. I'm so hyped. Let's go. I'm only in the first exhibit of the Corvette Museum right now, but I gotta start by showing you this. The first Corvettes were made by these guys that were get these solid blocks of clay and sculpt what they wanted the car to look like. This has a foam core, but the originals were complete clay and they would sculpt them ever so slowly until they come up with a design they wanted and then they'd go into the actual, like the, the factory and build this car out of a clay model. What we're looking at right here is the third ever Corvette chassis ever made, ever made. So this is like a 1953 part of a car. It's so epic. <laughs> I'm like scared to share facts because other people know more than me here. <laughs> it's cool. Oh my goodness. So first ever Corvette design right here. Here's the Thunderbird. That's like a famous car, man. Oh my gosh. 1961 Corvette, 57 Corvette. I didn't know this, but apparently this is the car. This Gran Turismo Corvette was the one that inspired the video game Gran Turismo 2009. I guess PlayStation 3. And even professional drivers, apparently they're saying, compete on virtual tracks like the one being shown up here. This is the car that inspired a generation of gamer kids. Amazing. This is my favorite one so far. It seems like a, like a little, it's a race car from 1957, but it seems like a little future car. There's a rocket on the back, but it's really just the headrest for the driver that makes that thing up. Look at this little tiny car. That's so cool. Oh my gosh, I might have to take it back. Now we have the Mako Shark. This is the Mako Shark and it's on like a big Lazy Susan. Oh my gosh. All right, it says right here. Avid angler, Bill Mitchell, once caught a shark while on vacation. He was captivated by the white underbelly that faded into deep blue on the top side where the dorsal fin lay. So <laughs> he made this car based off of a Mako shark. 
That's definitely my favorite car so far. I take it back. That's my favorite. So you want to look at one of the new cars. This is the 2019 C7 ZR1. Like one of the ultimate racing cars. This thing's a beast. This is the coolest room in the entire building so far. Aside from a few like off little more crazy models. This shows every single evolution of the Corvette from 1953. We have 1962 here, and we can just walk around and we look at every stage through 90s over here. 55. If you're like me, I like to see the newest stuff always. So if we look up here, oh, I like that one, 65. That's pretty. But the newest one, the 2023, is real fancy. Look at this. 2023 Z06 Now, that's just the normal stuff. Let's go look at some of the more exotic models. <laughs> look at this thing. The Cosmic Invader. Oh my gosh. This is an electric car from 1970. A concept car. Look at this. <laughs> I love it. This is the car that everyone here comes to see though. The Batman Returns Batmobile. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Look at that thing. Who knew it was a Corvette? <laughs> cool tour. Cool tour. That's it. Hopefully I did some good edits for you. <laughs> here we go. Mammoth Caves National Park, the biggest underground track, like a charted cave system, I think, in the world. And I don't think it's completely discovered yet, so that's kind of cool. We're not going to be going spelunking in this one. I've done that a few times before, but it takes a ton of uh, planning to get into Mammoth Caves because it's like the most popular cave system in the United States. So you got to get reservations early. And I've already done it in other places, so honestly, I'm not really that interested. But we're here, and that means there's a lot of wildlife. I've never really ran around out here, and we're going to do it today. So here we are in the forests of Mammoth Cave National Park. And you can tell it's pretty awesome. This is thick forest. The road's just like right over here and it's so thick you can't even tell. <laughs> so absolutely awesome park. But there is one problem I have with this forest that I absolutely despise. And I'll tell you about it in just a second. That, that right there is what I hate about this part of the forest. That, if you can't tell, is a tick. That is a tick that is likely infested with Lyme's disease. Now, the trail I was on just try kind of ended, so I was kind of hoping that I wouldn't find one of these ticks. I might have more on me right now. But that little tick right there is capable of giving you disease that lasts the rest of your life, called Lyme's disease. I, and it'll fuck you up, <laughs> all right? I hate the fact of this, because there are ticks on the West Coast all over none of them have lyme's disease a disease that sticks with you forever they have diseases you can get over on your own gosh and i just saw another one on my leg man i got to take care of this but we're gonna keep walking in just a second all right so listen after getting those ticks on me i'm feeling super unmotivated to explore the rest of this park and don't get me wrong it's cool like look around like you can see on either side it's so green very pretty uh, but the problem is you can see all this low foliage on the side of the roads, right? It's like knee-high to chest-high foliage, which is all tick territory. So I'm feeling super unmotivated to go run around because that's my favorite thing to do is just run through the forest and go find cool stuff to do. But here, you just get a ton of ticks on you. I was a quarter mile off the road. Two ticks, man. It's just so sad. So it's a little bit disappointing. But Mammoth Cave is still a cool place, there's no doubt. You can make it up of your own mind when you get here on whether or not it's a place you actually want to explore a little bit despite the ticks. But I think you got to come in like the high summer when it's too hot for them or in like late fall. I think that's when the best time is to explore. Right now in spring, it's just tick paradise. So I think that's it. Moving on to the arc for me. 
Good morning, my adventure-loving friends. Uh, I don't, couldn't tell you where I am today. I'm in a town in Kentucky, I think. Yeah, Kentucky, because I crossed the border last night. I was in Indiana, almost died. The craziest place, like Louisville. Terrible city, terrible city. But today, things are improving, because today we go to the Ark. And I'm very excited about it, like the most expensive museum that I think I've ever been in, according to the website. But this arc looks insane. Cool transition to arc now. <laughs> Welcome to the arc. <laughs> Look how big it is. It hardly fits in the whole camera frame behind me. So if you're not familiar with Bible history, which I'm no expert on, by the way, this is based off of Noah's Ark. This is a recreation of the ark that supposedly carried all of life into the new world after God flooded the planet. Is there any truth to it? Probably some. I don't know if the whole thing's true. I'm not a very religious person. I wouldn't kind of consider myself that, but this is still a pretty amazing thing to see with a lot of historical significance. So we're gonna go in, check it all out. Things like 500 some feet long, like over 50 feet tall. Absolutely huge. So let's go see what we can learn. <laughs> so listen, am I a huge fan? All the ideology of Christianity? No. But is this place magnificent, marvelous, spectacular? 100%. And they're nailing the vibe with the with the speakers playing the sound of the stormy ocean outside. It's almost like riding on the ark with Noah way back in the day. Look how big it is! Oh my gosh! stuff they had to sell they are masterful sellers here like just have up sales for everything booklets uh, gift shops coffee shops merchandise uh, tours they, they're masterful salespeople and that leads me into my plan. I just wanted to get away from this people so I don't offend anyone when I'm saying this a lot of what they do here is selling they're not necessarily preaching facts they're selling things based on some, a thread of a fact or a thread of a logic line, and then they take a leap to the next step. Now, what, what I wanna be clear with here, just because they say some things that are very far-fetched to me, very far-fetched and don't have any evidence that I know of to support it. One of the workers just walked by me and gave me the dirty eye while I was filming this video while I'm questioning her religion, which is why I'm trying to be kind of quiet find a little corner to film this video over here uh, but the point that i was making is just because there are some things that are super far-fetched all right doesn't mean that there's no truth to this that there's usually truth in most stories and the bible is a story that people have told for a very long time in many different places probably because the church was the most powerful entity on the planet for a long time and spread their word all over the globe and killed you if you didn't agree with them <laughs> but, uh, this is a uh, it's an interesting thing to think about because it, when they start saying things like, was the entire earth covered by water? No, it wasn't. If all the ice in the world melted today, I think like scientists estimate it would only increase the global ocean levels by like 230 feet. But the Bible says that the water covered the highest peaks of every mountain on planet earth. Is that true? There's there's no way. 6,000 years ago, there's no logical way that I can make that jump. But the Bible, I mean, this uh, whole is exhibit is very good at selling. So that's one thing that I didn't like about coming to places like this. Uh, it doesn't mean that there's no truth to it. Was there potentially a guy floating around on an ark when the world flooded a few thousand years ago? For sure. Sure. I mean, I mean, I mean it was pr probably in a pretty exciting world <laughs> to live in. And would I write about that? If I was a guy floating around on an ark and I was like, shit, dude, the world flooded. Like the Sahara Desert's a great example, thought to have flooded, even though it used to be a paradise back in the day. Bro, I would absolutely write about that shit all day, <laughs> right? But, I, so it could have been true, right? Everything written in the book, in the Bible by, um, what's his face, Noah, could have been true from a perspective but they're taking such a huge logic leap such a huge logic leap 
and trying to lead you down this path that everything is true, everything that they say is true, which is a very dangerous hive mind sort of thinking, which is why I don't like most religions. Christianity is a great example of it. Christianity is like the religion that won because they were better at selling and more aggressive than every other religion. Uh, so it's something to be aware of when you're in places like this. Is there some truth to it? Almost certainly, almost certainly. Is all of it true? Almost definitely not. Almost definitely not, but still very cool to come see and look at this massive arc they built, dude. So that's the last stop in Kentucky. That was a long section of talking video, but hopefully it was somewhat entertaining for you because this place is very, very fascinating. I'm gonna get a little food here and I will heading off to the final state in the 50 state tour that is Delaware. Here we go, baby. Look at it, look at it, look at it. West Virginia, West Virginia, and then way over here. Cut, cut ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna be jogging for a while. And then, and then, and then over here, Virginia, Virginia. That means I'm only one state away. I'm only one state away from Delaware. That loud truck. Oh wow, lots of loud trucks. Oh my gosh, man. Oh my gosh, I've been driving for so long for so long and I'm in Virginia and now we're going to Shenandoah National Park which is gonna be so fun and then after Shenandoah Delaware Delaware we're so close come on almost 50 almost 50 baby found a little pocket to hide in with all the wind, but I just made it to the Shenandoah Valley, Shenandoah National Park. Uh, this is in Virginia, and I, there's a few places you'll see that are just more aesthetically pleasing. Green as far as the eye can see. One of the greenest places on the planet. It reminds me of what like, Ireland or Scotland is supposed to look like. Amazing, you can feel the wind, how strong it is right up here too. This is a special park, I had a, like a lost legend. Really cool to be here, it's on my way to Delaware, the final state in the United States. I'm that close. Almost done, baby. Almost done. Next time you'll see me, I think I'm in Delaware. It's special to feel like an almost moment. Gonna be a big payoff soon. Plug your ears, I might scream in the next clip. With this step, I step into all 50 states. <laughs> That's it. I... <laughs> yes! Yes! <sighs> thank you, Car Car. Oh my gosh, thank you. Thank you, car, car. Oh my goodness. This car, this car has taken me to 49 states. I had to fly to Hawaii, but this car has been to all 49 states. It flew me everywhere I needed to go. It took me everywhere I needed to go, and now I made it. I made it.
Oh my gosh, aside from being the 50th state, which makes it special, Delaware also has the country's largest estuary, Chesapeake Bay. So we're gonna go see that. I'll catch up with you. Let's do it. It's been two days since I filmed that clip of me driving here in Delaware. Right now I'm down at the southern edge of the state on the Maryland-Delaware border, a place called Assateague Island. Uh, and it's the first time that I've got to sit down and really process what I just did. <laughs> 23 months on the road, living in my car, traveling the country, started as just me moving out of my apartment back in 2021 with no real plans on where I was gonna go I just knew I was gonna find somewhere and know it would work out and I went down to Oregon with the expectation to get another apartment and just kept driving now 23 months later from that almost two years next next month will be two years on the road just out here seeing what I can find the ocean here I don't even really know how to feel because it's just like such a such a long goal finally finished. It's one of those things that you never really, I never planned on even doing 50 states. It was just something that happened naturally. And now after so long, I'm done and I don't really know what to do with myself. But I just probably a lot of emotional processing used to have. <laughs> I'm gonna do a part two to this video where I sit down and I answer some of the most common questions I've got on my trip across the country, a couple of the things I've learned, a couple of tips I have about this lifestyle. But right now I've really just gotta sit and process this because I can feel myself like almost getting emotional but like not letting myself get emotional because I'm talking to the camera <laughs> and trying to keep it together a little bit. Uh, so. I'm going to see you in the next part of this. Just check my channel homepage and you'll see the next part two of this video where I just sit down and talk with you for a bit. But right now I'm, I'm going to enjoy the pelicans flying up the coast. And apparently there's wild horses out here somewhere too. So maybe I'll sit down and see if I can film some of those. Stay wild. Be free. Accomplish the things you never knew you could accomplish or never even knew you wanted to. And I'll see you in the next one.